morning. My name is Russell Coburn. I'm a physicist. Um, I became a Christian at the age of 18, 25 years ago now, uh, just before I came up to Cambridge to read natural sciences. And so I arrived in Cambridge uh, at a very interesting time in life and was uh, very blessed by the ability to, to talk the Bible through uh, Kick You and uh, St. Henry the Great and, and places like that. So a quarter of a century further on, I've uh, spent most of the time since then uh, studying nanotechnology and related things within physics. And so I'm going to use my seminar to give you a uh, reduced Shakespeare company education of uh, nanotechnology. And I'm going to start that now. So thanks to the, and the scientists can't publicly speak without PowerPoint, I'm afraid. So you'll, you'll, you'll see behind uh, the first slide of my seminar where I'm going to take you from the size scale of humans right down to the size scale of atoms and uh, show you all points in between. And then if we move on to the, the next slide, um, I'd like to give you a quick tour of some of the techniques of nanotechnology. How is it that as people of a meter or so in size, we are able to manipulate materials on a near atomic scale and do uh, science and engineering uh, at a size level that previous generations of philosophers uh, even question the existence of. And then if you show the third slide, I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of some of the materials of nanotechnology. Where do we find this stuff? What are the materials that are being used? And you'll see there, there are two Nobel Prizes cited uh, in that one slide alone. So the first part of the seminar is going to be uh, a little bit of science, but then I want to uh, begin to ask, well, why the fuss? Why uh, should we care about nanotechnology? And I would argue that we are right in the middle, this time of human existence, we are right in the middle of a, a new industrial revolution. And many of us aren't aware of it, but in the future, our children and grandchildren will look back and will wonder that we were there while all this was happening. Just as we would look back to previous generations who took part in the, uh, the first industrial revolution, or indeed things like the, the Iron Age or the Bronze Age, these real pivotal moments when technology transforms humanity. Um, I also want to uh, talk about some of the controversy that's been, that's surrounded nanotechnology. Let me just read you a little um, paragraph from an article in The Guardian. Um, so this was about 10 years ago this was written, just as the nanotech boom was taking off. Um, and the writer says, the scenario is a familiar one. Scientists open Pandora's box, awaken Frankenstein's monster, or maybe just play God. But this time, the menace on the laboratory bench is undetectable by any conceivable optical microscope. It offers a nightmare vision straight out of science fiction. The destruction of the environment, perhaps even of the world, by robots smaller than viruses. You cannot see it, so you cannot know how afraid you should be. <laughs> and I think this is an interesting challenge to many of us who are working in, I guess, what we might think of as edgy, technological disciplines. So those of us who work with genetically modified organisms, those of us who work in biotech, all the areas that on the one hand have huge potential to do good on the earth, to address uh, the major societal needs and challenges of the next century, aging population, water shortage, rising carbon levels, all of, all of these sorts of things, and yet are coupled intrinsically with prophecies of great destruction and great damage. And how as a Christian should we decide where we want to put our energies and whose side of these debates do we want to be on? And so uh, I want to talk about what the ethical implications are, so what the implications of, of what we do. Uh, so in the seminar I'll talk about questions of safety, public acceptance, uh, and also the potential solutions to global challenges. But then also, uh, from a Christian perspective, what are the doctrinal implications? As a result of the things that we are studying and discovering in the lab today, how are these changing the way we think about God? So I'll be asking, do we really have a new science here? And does that mean we have to rethink the relationship between science and faith? Do we have a new theology of creation? How does this play into intelligent design and God of the gaps type arguments? I want to talk this afternoon about are we mitigating the fall or are we proclaiming a new gospel? There are some very gospel proclamation sounding statements made about nanotechnology. And then as a final taster, 
uh, I just want to raise the question, do we have here in the nano world uh, the missing link in abiogenesis? So the, uh, the question of, of how can chemical activity go from individual protons right through to something as complex as DNA and life? And what role does DNA have? What role does nanotechnology play? Thank you.